Welcome everyone. In this video we are going to do some calculations for creep. So as you can see I put some numbers on the screen. There are three columns. The first is the temperature given in uh, Celsius degrees and then uh, we have stress in the middle column in, given in megapascal and uh, we have the creep rate or epsilon dot given in one per hour uh, units. And then uh, we can have several questions based on this data. We will pick uh, two questions uh, for this type of data and then uh, we will try to solve it. So question one is evaluate the n parameter uh, in Norton's creep law. So we just write this down. Evaluate n. And then the second question can be uh, using the n value from the previous question evaluate the q parameter. So evaluate Q. So we will need all this data but first of all we have to know where do these two parameters N and Q come from. So let's uh, start with the equation. So we would like to use Norton's uh, creep law and uh, this is W. That is the following. So the epsilon dot uh, equals with V0 parameter times uh, this exponential Q divided by RT times uh, sigma to the nth power. And uh, R is the universal gas constant here. So this is what we have now and uh, we will try to make this uh, to a linear form so we can handle the data better. So we have to take the logarithm of this equation, the 10 based uh, logarithm. So we will add uh, a few tricks here so basically the equation will look uh, like this, so log epsilon dot equals log b0 and uh, minus q times uh, q divided by r times t times 1 over 2.3026 times n times log sigma. And how does this uh, appear here or why? So we know that if we would like to cancel out the exponential here then we have to use the natural logarithm and that is uh, basically uh, like this. So ln and then exponential 1 for example then that will uh, give us uh, 1. And then uh, if we do the same with the 10 based logarithm, so with this guy here, then uh, this will give us 0 0.4343. So when we want to do the log, then uh, we just uh, add this extra step here. So basically a conversion between the natural and the 10 based logarithm. And then uh, we would like to be able to handle these numbers better so we just uh, add a trick here so we just uh, modify this part a little bit here but uh, nothing is uh, changed basically so this is the same and then 
B0 is the same and here it's a very bit different so Q divided by and then we do like this and uh, times 1000 for T plus sorry this was plus plus N times So this is what we get. Uh, so basically, I just uh, divide, uh, multiplied this part here by thousand, and I separated the numbers a bit differently, and uh, we will see it why. But basically, there is a multiplication of thousand divided by thousand. So I multiplied it by one. So basically, nothing happened there. And uh, previously, I made a mistake in the previous equation. This should be plus. So when you do the logarithm here, uh, this is a plus. So what we have now here is uh, very good because now uh, we have a nice uh, equation and uh, now what we want to do is uh, we would like to plot so let's say we would like to plot uh, log sigma versus uh, log epsilon in order to get the n so let's do that so we have the data here so x is uh, the log epsilon uh, log sigma sorry and the log uh, epsilon dot is uh, on the y-axis and I just uh, plotted this data only for 700 uh, degrees so only for this set of data for now because we have the most uh, data points here and uh, therefore it's more reasonable to do that so now we're just doing it for 700 degrees and uh, we have these uh, five data points and then we just plot a linear uh, over these five points and then the slope so let me write it down so the slope uh, gives us the n value which is now 3.9 so this is very nice because now we have the n value in our equation so we now have to rearrange this equation so basically uh, what we have to do is we would like to rearrange this to make it look like a uh, linear equation so therefore we do like this so log uh, epsilon dot and then we put um, n times log uh, sigma on the same side so n times log sigma and then we have log b0 minus the rest of the parts here times 1000 divided by t so now you see that this can be used as y and then this part can be used as b and then this is basically a times x so this is how our linear equation looks like now and one thing that we have to take care is that we have to convert t to kelvins because now we have it in celsius degrees but this should be converted uh, to kelvin so basically you just add 273.15 and then you get the kelvin degrees so we are fine so far so what we have to do now is uh, we calculate this so the logarithm uh, of epsilon uh, dot and then uh, the logarithm of uh, sigma and then we also have to calculate uh, this guy here 1000 divided by uh, t where t is in Kelvin and not in Celsius because that's uh, how we match the units 
and uh, basically that's all so now let's plot this data so now we have the data here so you can see that we have like these three data sets here because uh, these are the three different uh, temperatures but uh, what you can see is that uh, we plotted uh, 1000 divided by t against uh, this long equation here, long formula and then we got a roughly linear correlation between the points and uh, again we take the slope of this which is minus 14.88 and then uh, we will use this slope in this equation and uh, this equation looks uh, like this so basically we told that uh, this is the slope here so basically Q divided by 2303 times the universal gas constant equals to minus uh, 14.889 and then uh, just uh, substituting the gas constant and uh, just rearranging the equation for Q then uh, we get Q equals uh, let me just rearrange this and then the final result is basically 285.12 kilojoule uh, per mole times Kelvin so this is the unit why we need it uh, here and here the Kelvin as a temperature and not in Celsius so this is the final result for the Q parameter so basically answer uh, A1, so N parameter is let's say 3.98 and A2 Q equals 285.12 kilojoule per mole times Kelvin. So this was very easy and uh, straightforward and uh, you can do it for the other uh, cur uh, other set of data so you can ev uh, evaluate it for another temperature and another temperature as well and then uh, you will get a set of data somewhere here and then uh, you will get a set of data there you evaluate the uh, slope again uh, let's uh, mark it with M1 and M2 or something like this and then uh, basically that's all and based on that uh, slope which should be very close to the uh, red uh, dashed line you can again evaluate the Q value but then uh, on the second step which is this uh, you just use uh, the same values and uh, it doesn't really influence your uh, Q, but uh, the slope here is is more influenced, let's say, because here, of course, uh, you will use a different n in this part of the equation here, or or it's more visible here. So maybe this, so this can be m1 or m2, and it will slightly change the data, but it will just uh, shift it a little bit, and it will not really change uh, this slope and then uh, you can get uh, the other values as well but uh, it's very simple so if you have uh, data like this you have to make sure first of all that uh, you convert this uh, Norton's creep law equation to a logarithmic form so you can work with uh, like lines instead of having uh, weird exponential or logarithmic curves which are more, more difficult to read and then also you have to make sure that uh, the temperature should be in Kelvin instead of Celsius because of the units in the equations and then you also have to make sure that you properly convert the logarithms and the exponentials so 
that's fine and it's it's really straightforward to like pick these different uh, values which are needed so basically you just take the logarithm and expand or extend this uh, table here and uh, you also calculate the thousand divided by the t and so on and so on and you plot everything to their corresponding part so i hope that uh, this was useful and helpful and uh, i hope that you can use this for some sort of exam or homework or something and if you have any questions just uh, let me know so see you in the next video